Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today we're going to take a look at strings and their basic functionality in Swift, including setting variables, string interpolation, string properties and functions, and string comparison. So let's get started with a new Xcode playground. When you first open up a new playground, you'll notice that Xcode has already provided you with a string, but let's get rid of that and just create our own. Today we'll work with cryptocurrency strings. So let's say var bitcoin equals bitcoin, and let's make our own new cryptocurrency. Let cheese coin equal cheese coin. So now we have two different string variables. Bitcoin is using the var keyword, meaning it can be mutated or changed. And cheese coin is set using the let keyword, meaning it cannot be changed. We can also create a multi-line string using triple quotes var long equals three quotes hit enter to go to the next line and type out your long string this string is far too long to only fit on one line and let's end our three quotes and now we can print out the contents of these variables using the print statement print bitcoin print cheese coin and print long. We can press play or we can press command shift enter as a keyboard shortcut to start running the playground. We can see we have Bitcoin, cheese coin, and then our long string. And you'll notice that the indentation is still preserved. And that's because we put a tab in the string itself. And we can remove that command shift enter to press play and you'll notice that the indentation is gone. Now what if we want to print out multiple string variables at a time? We can say print Bitcoin plus cheese coin, and that'll print out Bitcoin cheese coin, but you'll notice there's no space in between. So to add the space, let's copy this line, paste it, and then in here next to our plus, we can put two quotes and a space in between the quote, and then another plus sign. Now when we run this again, we have the proper space that we wanted. Now what if you wanted to include additional text with your string variables? This is where string interpolation comes into play. We can say, I like, now you might be tempted to put Bitcoin and cheese coin here, but if you do this, you'll notice that when we run it, we're gonna get Bitcoin and cheese coin exactly as they are, literally. And that's because we didn't use string interpolation. Now, if we want to print out what's actually in the Bitcoin and cheese coin variables, we have to escape them using string interpolation. So we would say print quote, I like, and here you would enter backslash, open parentheses and close parentheses, Bitcoin, and same thing here for cheese coin. And you'll also notice that Bitcoin and cheese coin turned green. So that tells you that this is actually the variable that's being substituted here, as opposed to up here where the text is orange. Now, if we run this, we get what we wanted, which was Bitcoin and cheese coin variables being printed out. String interpolation also allows you to run mathematical operations within this escape sequence. Print, I bought backslash parentheses one, and you put our variable name again, cheese coin for you can say dollar sign backslash another escape sequence one times ten thousand dollars now if we print this we get i bought one cheese coin for ten thousand dollars we can loop through each character of a string using a for loop so we would say for char and this is just a variable name that's used for a temporary variable. It can be char, it can be letter, whatever you want to name it. But let's just call it char. For char in cheese coin. Braces. Print. And we'll include char here just as a placeholder. And then we can include our char variable. We press play. And you'll see that cheese coin is being printed out one character at a time, each on its own line. 
let's look at some other methods and properties that are available for strings. We can obtain how long the string is using the count property. Print cheesecoin dot count. We get 10, so there's 10 characters in our cheese coin. We can also call the uppercase or lowercase method, as you can see here, to uppercase or lowercase this, the whole string. Let's run this, we get cheese coin lowercase. You can use the first and last methods to obtain the first or last characters of the string. Print cheese coin dot first. Let's run this, and you'll notice we get an optional C, and also Xcode seems to be providing this warning for us. And this is happening because Xcode doesn't actually know if the string that we're trying to print the first character of is empty or not. So it wraps it in an optional. We'll have a separate video on how to work with optionals, but for now, we just know that Xcode doesn't know if this string is empty or not, so it's providing a warning. And just to show you more what I mean, let's print an empty string dot first. And this should return nil because there's nothing in this string. Press play and we get nil. We also have remove first and remove last methods available, which will remove either the first or the last characters of the string. So let's print bitcoin dot remove first. And you'll notice Xcode is telling us this this function removes and returns the first element of the collection. So this is going to remove the first letter in Bitcoin, which is the capital B, and return it, meaning that the print statement is going to print out capital B. There it is. Let's also look at replacing occurrences method, which allows us to replace certain occurrences within a string with a different string or different character. Print Coin dot replacing occurrences of. Now we remove the capital B from Bitcoin. It's gone. So we have only itcoin remaining. So here we can say I want to change it with a different string. And let's put in here ghost. So this is going to replace itcoin with ghost coin. And press play. And there it is. Strings also can be sorted using the sorted method. Print Bitcoin dot sorted. You'll see that it returns the elements of the sequence sorted alphabetically. And now we have an array of all the characters in the Bitcoin variable sorted alphabetically. And you'll notice that we no longer have ghost coin. And that's because this replacing occurrences function didn't actually replace the occurrences permanently, just for this one line. Finally, let's look at the split method, which allows us to split a string into multiple substrings based on a character that we enter. Print Bitcoin dot split. We have a bunch of different split methods here, but let's just look at the first one where we're splitting on a certain character. So again, remember that our Bitcoin string contains itcoin. So let's separate it by T and make sure to include your quotes there. So when we press play, we have an array returned with two different strings in it. One is I and the other one is coin. And that's because the T character, which we said was the separator, is not included in the string. So anything before T is put into the string to the left and anything after T is put into the string to the right. Now, if we want to add two different strings together, you can use either the plus equals operator or we can use string.append method. Let's just look at the append method for now because that's the most common one. Bitcoin.append. And you see we have a couple different options here. But again, let's go with the first one because this allows us to append just a string. And let's provide a string here saying is interesting, period. Now let's print out the results. Bitcoin, run it, and we see Bitcoin is interesting.
Finally, let's look at string comparison. And this can be done using the elements equal function or the equal equal operator. Let's just look at the equal equal operator for now because that's the most common way to compare strings. If Bitcoin equal equal cheese coin, close parentheses and add our curly braces, print. I'm not sure why these are the same. Else, good, they're not the same. And let's run it. And of course, we know that they're not the same. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and ring that dinner bell to get notifications of my next video.